Look at that nose. Very pretty. Some of the guys writing that she's too much like that boy. Nah. She's just modern. You're right. It's modern. It's the future. In another million years, there'll be no men, no women. There'll just be people. It's logical evolution. Evolution is a thing. No more men or women. It's the whole world full of wankers. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. All right, so this week we're doing 1980s Gregory's Girl. I watched it last year for the first time, or maybe oh, yeah. the year before. It's basically, if you're in Scotland, everyone's seen Gregory's Girl, and you've probably seen it around Christmas. It's partly why I picked it. It's sort of that perfect n- between Christmas and New Year's Day sort of movie that will be on at some point in Scotland. You know, down here it would be The Great Escape and that sort of thing. It's just one of those classics. I fucking love this film. Like, this. Right from the very get-go in the first scene, it tells you exactly what the film's going to be about and the tone it's going to be for it. Take off. Take off. Transmit. Tell her to take off her bra. Take off your bra. Concentrate, you bastards. Concentrate. Gregory and his mates, just a couple of mouth-breathing morons who are huddled together trying to get a look at this woman changing in a window. And trying to telepathically, like, convince her somehow to take off her brassiere or her bra or whatever she's doing. And then those couple of younger lads come by afterwards going, oh, it's a lot of fuss about a bit of tit, innit? The title sounds, like, all nice, like, Gregory's Girl, like... And then, like, when that first scene, I was like, right, this isn't a family film, I don't think... Like... So you're wrong, though, it is a family oh, film. Oh, really? Like, that is a film the whole family would watch. That's a film you'd watch from being a young kid. And... I wouldn't even get into the whole some bits don't hold up today in terms of like you wouldn't get away with that now because obviously you technically shouldn't spy on someone getting changed but this film is about how little men and women understand each other especially when you're first growing up and you start to fancy each other but you just can't work out each other you can't work out your motivations like the boys in the film are completely clueless do you know how they make veal? They get their little baby calves and they hang them upside down and they slit their throats and let the blood drip out. It's very interesting, isn't it? The girls are more mature as kind of emotionally intelligent girls tend to be around those ages. But they're equally as baffled by just men. Like, they don't get it. They don't get each other. Look at all these men. (laughs) Boys. What's the difference? Call me quick, stop. And that's the whole thing that's running the whole way through it. And that's kind of, other than the fact that Gregory's such a plonker, that's the whole gag of the whole film. It's basically the plot is, horny teenagers in high school try to fuck. <laughs> that, that's it. Just yeah, that is the basis like... of the whole film, because after the opening scene, we see him going into school, and he's coach of his football team's having a go at him. And he's basically saying he's uh, going to take him off striker. Another great character, the coach, you know, he's... He's sort of like, he, his team is terrible. They've lost eight in a row, apparently. Mm. Every, all the other teachers are making fun of him. <laughs> Who is it? I'm that daft boy in fourth year. The one that's in your football team. Oh, well, I heard they were awarded a corner last week and took a lap of honour. <laughs> oh, him. He looks really young and he's trying to grow a moustache to look older, but like all the other teachers are making fun of him for it. I just love when he's going at Gregory about how like everyone's laughing at us out there. And he's Gregory goes... Football is all about entertainment. Give them a good laugh. It's only a game. It's only a game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, to be fair, like, a couple of times in this film, I got kind of, like, paedophile vibes about the teachers. Mm. So I was like... Oh, they like, every male... Over, yeah. Like, every adult male in this is a complete pedo. There, there was one scene in the staff room where... They're like, I'm not going to bother to do a Scottish accent. Where where they're like discussing some ginger student. And they're like, he even turns around and says, you'll get done for that. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> Are you still getting those poems from June? <sighs> oh, come on. You know, it's no right to ask these sort of questions. We are dealing with the emotions of a vulnerable, sensitive, 16-year-old redhead. But it's the way, it's like, I don't know if they were actually doing anything or if they were just liking the attention, but the way he, he topped it off with Redhead was fucking mm. grim, man. There was something so horrible about that. 
But also you have the workman, Wolf Whistling, the schoolgirls. Mm. But again, it's kind of done in that way where everyone's laughing and joking about it. Yeah. Like the girls are kind of rolling their eyes and Gregory's just cracking up as he sees it. And then they head into school. And at one point, one of the lads who's obviously left school early and he's got a job as a window cleaner comes back to clean. He's window, cleaning yeah. the windows of the school. But he obviously he used to be in their class, so the teacher opens the window and she's chatting to him through the window, and she absolutely she badly wants to fuck him. Yeah, like she's all over him. That that scene sticks in my head because, well, he obviously seemed like a good student because the teacher was like, "Why don't you just come?" I don't back? think he was a good student. I think he was a good lad. Yeah, yeah. Well, why don't you come back and like visit me and, and like yeah? And I was like, "What is going oh, on?" She here? wanted him bad. Yeah, yeah. I love when he does a he, he wipe her. Uh, he cleans her glasses for her as well. Yes, I. <laughs> I hope you're doing mine for free, Billy. Well, for old time's sake. Give us your glasses and I'll do them as well. No charge. <laughs> Thank you. Listen, why don't you come up and see me sometime? Oh, I'll do that. I'll use the stairs, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it free of charge for you. <laughs> um, but that kind of sums up that whole wolf whistle thing. How times have changed since, what, 81 this film was released? Yeah, yeah. to. Two, well, nearly 2023 now because so I read an article the other day that wolf whistling if you wolf whistle now it's legitimately going to be seen as an offence yeah they're going to do you for it like, so looking back at this film what, however many years ago 81 it's dr- I know it's set in a different country but the perceptions and stuff have changed so much yeah. of, of it's well, just I interesting I don't know in se- necessarily they're even saying it like this is good it was more just poking fun at it, pointing it out, and then having, you know, the, let's be real, like, every male character in this film is portrayed as a complete bumbling fucking idiot. Yeah, 100%. And every female character is, at worst, charmingly dopey. No one, like, all the, all the female characters are fully switched on. They're the straight men in terms of, like, the comedy act sort of set up of it. The guys are all complete fucking idiots. I don't know. I disagree with that because at worst, some of the female characters are actually quite manipulative. I think they that's use... A, that's agreeing with what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, I guess I get like, what you're well, saying. Saying it in a different way, but they're smart is my point. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, actually, yeah, I agree with you then at worst. But it's like they they knew, like, discussing between themselves, like, which boys fancied them. And a lot of the time, they just lead them on. Like, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And like, they, they are like idiots. Yeah. Well, again, it's reality. Like, that is what happened. Like, part of the thing is, girls that age, and probably women in general, sometimes they get an air of arrogance about it. And it's mainly down to the fact of men are generally the pursuers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So naturally, 100%. we're the girl, ones who have to do something. And we're the ones who have to figure it out. And women naturally are kind of, don't really say what they mean. They'll say one thing, but it really means this. So there's kind of an unintentional gaslighting that all men have to figure out from a young age. And most men are idiots to begin with. So oh, yeah. it's really, really confusing. And you do end up looking like an idiot. So naturally, they kind of get an air of like, oh, they're so clueless. If, if the shoe was on no, the other foot, we would it's feel true. the same way about them. It's just the way the cookie crumbles. It is, but it's beautifully explored in this film. It's true because I, I'm you know, open personal. I'd never like be able to tell like if a girl like fancied me, like that it would be like right in my face, and I, like, I just wouldn't have a clue. Like, it's because you, you you're thinking of them like guys with tits. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Well, I would just be like, do you want to fuck? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then we'd fuck. So she didn't say that. So. And I've also wondered on the flip side of the coin. Do you know that whole like? typical stereotypical thing of where you see like a teen movie and like a girls have a sleepover and they're like johnny is so like dreamy dreamy yeah. and like they're all like <laughs> I, I, I like i like because like with men they're just like as you said like with men they're just like oh she's all right <laughs> do you know what i mean do they actually well, we like don't... discuss that between themselves <laughs> yeah men don't really discuss like most men don't even discuss girls are sleeping with like generally if like a guy brings like you'll ask your friend as a courtesy to be polite how's their girlfriend's getting on but you don't care and if they just start <laughs> talking yeah about it for no reason you're just looking at him like what the fuck are yeah you that yeah for? yeah yeah dickhead. like don't talk about yeah that. exactly yeah yeah and it's not even in a chauvinistic way it's just a lot of things 
it's about motivation. Like, no one... Like, the fact that women talk about men a lot, they clearly enjoy it and want to for whatever reason. Yeah, Even no. when they're talking about them in a bad light. But men just don't want to talk about women like that. We just... I don't know. We just don't. Unless it's, like, in the way Gregory does in the film. Like, that's a classic thing a man does as well, is fall in love with a look. Like, they've just mm, looked... He just yeah. looks at her. He's like, she's fit. That equals I'm in love now. And then he's already imagining his future with her. Have you ever been in love? I'm in love. Since when? Half an hour ago. <laughs> he's talking to the other student, one of his mates, who's the baker, which is hilarious as well. Like he's basically starts off. He's just a really good baker. He's just I don't know. They're, they're doing a class where they're yeah where they I guess it's like what do you call it? Food food tech. tech food, food tech, tech yeah. in our day it was probably called something different back then. And he's like this master baker who knows everything, and he's using it to bribe the principal. And well, we're still doing the two kinds. There's a jam filled in the rings. What kind of jam? What would you like? Black cunt? That's no problem. We see later at one point he's got a little mini business selling uh, pastries in the boys' toilets. And they're also selling pictures of fit girls from the school. And he's using it to like flirt with some of the girls where he's telling you like she comes over asking his advice about like how many eggs in the pastry. And he's like, well, you don't put eggs in pastry. You dumb. Blah, blah, blah. And he sends her packing. But I just love when he's helping Gregory stir it, like holding his hand. And he starts asking <laughs> Have you ever been in love? And the other guy's just looking at him like, oh, God, where's this guy? They're always, in every single year, there'd be one geezer who is that geezer who would, like... It'd be like the Matrix, you know, that scene in Matrix where he, like, goes through the metal detector and they're like, stop, and he, like, opens it and he's got, like, loads of guns. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, like, one geezer, like, dr like, a shady drug dealer would always come along and, like, open his, like, yeah, blazers yeah. was, like, Kit Kat. 20p <laughs> chewing gum like like there'd be always be that one person who wanted to make money and just sell like out of date mm. Kit Kats he's like that I, that's one of the things I loved so much about this film is how there were so many side characters that would just yeah. pop up and just be hilarious man. like the the journalist as well like when Dorothy oh, yeah. Dorothy the girl he falls in love with she's like kind of as Gregory keeps saying, oh, modern woman, she's new, like, yeah. she's this, that. Because she wants to play football and she gets on the football team because she's the best footballer. Speaking of paedophilia as well, did you get a slight vibe from her and the coach? Yeah. We'll get to that later yeah, we'll that get comes to up that. more later, but there's definitely something going on there as well. But she joins the football team and I love the scene where he finally has his first real conversation with her when she comes in for a plaster after a game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they're chatting away. And, it, and it's kind of like a pasty, shitty Scottish version of that scene from Jaws where they're uh, comparing each other's scars. You know? See that? I was only three when that happened. I hurt my arm once. Can't get it any higher than this. Used to be able to get away up here. You just did. Nah, this arm. <laughs> stuck. You know, where they're going yeah, through yeah. their injuries. She's proper light. He's proper like zooming in. And, uh, and, like, and then he, he leans in. He leans in to look at her scar on her elbow, but then goes up vertically so his head's still like an inch away from her and then he just won't back off. But she at that point was kind of like, it felt like she was liking him a bit. And they get talking about yeah. Italy and Bella Bella, means pretty oh, in Italian yeah, yeah. and all that. It's cringy. And I just love where it is such the things you do at that age. And some people do late, at later ages because they never figure it out, but... Um, I wasn't yeah. a big at you. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Sorry, no, 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 I didn't, no, I didn't mean it like that. Oh, okay. But it, that is, yeah, that yeah. is like me. But like. it's such a funny thing where then he thinks, she mentions Italian once, so he immediately thinks, oh, I'll learn Italian mm. and then she'll love me. Or I'll just like compliment everything she does. And also it's like that thing you do as a kid where you're like, I'm in love with her. You keep building it up in her head. He has one conversation with her. Two by the end of the whole movie. I guess three, but his obsession 50% comes before he even has a conversation with her and then 50% is after but it just you know he never actually gets to know her or what she likes or what she's into or what kind of person she is it's not right it's unnatural it doesn't even look nice it's modern Andy it's good modern girls modern boys it's tremendous look 
<laughs> nah, the reason I was laughing, because I saw a lot of myself in Gregory, sadly, yeah. actually. I don't think that's sad. I think Gregory's an absolute He's fucking... He's a sweetheart. He's a bumbling idiot. Yeah. But everyone is at that age. He's I, a fucking legend. I love him. I, I kind of had that similar experience where she comes as a yeah. changing room when we went, I think we went on holiday to Krakow. We are staying in a hostel. I went into the shitty, like, showers. Oh, right. You know communal what I mean? showers yeah. in a hostel. Yeah, and right. I didn't realise they were communal. And I was just there, like, in my towel. With your tackle out. No, no, no. <laughs> and, you know, I, I'm quite, to be fair, I'm quite self-conscious of that stuff. Like, yeah. I don't like it. And then, like, three girls came in, just, like, in their, like, bras. Giggling. And I was like, oh, it's God. out of American Pie. Yeah. Sorry, and thing. I was like, oh, I was like, God. And they uh, they didn't speak any English. They were speaking, like, Polish. Oh, that's even worse. So they're probably, yeah, like, they were like, speaking Polish. another language yeah. and laughing. They were like, oh, God. <laughs> And then I just went like, I just literally ran out and I just felt exactly like fucking Gregory. I was like, oh, oh that's just popped horrible. into my head. But do you remember, we're not going to name any names here, but Gregory speaking Italian. Remember that guy at school, this guy at school where we used to go to school, fancied this girl. And he wrote a whole song for her. Oh, sorry, I was thinking languages. So I was no, like, where no, you no. Going? He wrote, it was kind of like a rap like, song. It was like... Whatever this girl's name, I love you. I fancy you, and then the hot, he done it in front of everyone, and she just went pure red. No, like, no he really he made a video of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. Which is even because you do it once and it's just a legend. This was like a video that was get. It was just when YouTube wasn't a thing. Thank God for him, but you know you could Bluetooth videos to each other. Yeah, so it still spread yes. like a virus. It oh. it, kind of, it kind of reminded me of you know <laughs> you know the step brothers right. He stops the whole dinner. He's like check this business proposal and they're like boats and holes, <laughs> <laughs> boats and everyone's just like flapping up like, but yeah poor guy that um, was brutal but that's another it's so good you bring that up though because it is part of it like the things we talked about that you can relate to it also just reminds you of the fucking stupid hilarious yeah. fun and stories and trauma that you'd have in school like it's, as much as there's elements of this film that sort of dips into the absurd at times you know like the the pastry shop and the toilets and yeah yeah some of the gags and some of the interplay between teachers and stuff but and some of the things teachers were getting away with but really no like it, it pretty much rings true like it would never be the exact same but you'd know you'd have a story like that like we didn't you know we we remember a certain teacher who was much beloved but you know had a tendency of losing his temper and maybe once a term would throw a chair or a desk at a student, usually like Which a year was, seven student. To, to, to know, it was always deserved though. I don't know if it was, <laughs> to be honest. He was a bit of a psycho. He, he, he just, his, basically this guy, not, his favourite pupils could do anything, like yeah. terrible things. But the one person he hated would just be like three minutes late. And he'd just be like, whack! <laughs> yeah, he was, a, he was a big guy as well. Yeah. Um, or you'd have, you know, other te like there was always other teachers that were doing little like side hustles and like scamming things for insurance from the school yeah, or, or yeah, just yeah, fucking yeah. over or just, you know, being a little creepy with the girls, but you don't think about it at the time, you think about it more years later. And schools were just clusterfucks, like it's probably way better nowadays. It's probably way probably way better just because it's you can't get away with shit. This, this film was interesting because obviously it's old. It was made in the 80s. But it kind of got me thinking about, like, the comparisons of our school, as you said. Like, I guess for us, like, one of our main things of, of talking to girls, you never actually do it in person, but you'd rush home to log on to fucking Microsoft <laughs> Messenger and be like... Dale, dale, dale. like That's where you first learnt emojis and shit. Yeah. But I loved as well that... Two of the friends, you know, the the two complete plonkers who were always trying to figure out, like, how, how are they going to get girls and how are they going to talk to girls? Yeah. He's always say, he would say, like, you know, uh, 14,000 tons of cornflakes oh, yeah, yeah. pass under this bridge every single day. It's a well-known fact. And everything's just a well-known fact. And going up to girls and trying to use it and, like, you talking about, like, how quickly snot comes out when you sneeze. And... Do you know that at least 12 tons of cornflakes passes under here every day? Really? It's a well-known fact. Oh, gee. Is that... I think it was them two idiots yeah. who were discussing between themselves, like, next to, like, a couple getting with each other. They were like, oh, you actually need to, like, 
try and start getting with girls now because even Gregory's doing it <laughs> and they're like they're just like and you do think like you do look sometimes because with the human nature it's always never like look at yourself to like sort it out it's always comparison like mm. well he's doing it so I need to like sort it out do you know what I mean like, well it's that thing of it's a giant jigsaw like it's just a big puzzle at that age yeah where you're like how do I do that maybe if I wear a leather jacket like you do think of those things you're like maybe if I wear a jacket like J- Gregory he's always trying to borrow his mate's jackets that is because nice he's obsessed jacket. like it's got to be the jacket tasteless salad come on Steve you gave Pete the jacket last week why not me that's exactly why Gregory old son did you see that jacket the day after grass stains I don't know all what kind of stains and he goes out with his sister, who that was another thing I loved in the movie. The relationship yeah. with his little sister. Because again, she's like very wise. She basically has to explain to him, this is what you do when you go out on a date. And he goes out shopping with her and he's, she's trying to help him pick out something nice to wear for the date. But he's just obsessed. Like, it's got to be brown for some reason. Like, he just thinks like brown is going to be nice. Like, it's got to be a brown yeah, jacket yeah, yeah, or a brown shirt. I like the sister because that can be an annoying role. At times, you know, that sort of role in a film where the intelligent kid who explains something to an older person, most times, you know, it's got that kind of like Dakota Fanning, annoying little smug dickhead feel about it. But I actually really liked like something about it just rung true. She did, did just seem like a sensible 10 year old. And <clears throat> I don't know if it was because of the film, it already had a lot of slightly wacky characters at times. And moments where it got a bit farcical that it didn't stand out and be annoying. But usually that sort of role pisses me off and I hate little child actors that are acting smarter than the adults. And it, um, again, I made comparisons to myself because like, she's giving advice about going on a date, like, telling him not what to say. Like, don't bring up Batman, for God's sake, which he later on does yeah. bring it up. And it's like me, it's like getting pep talks when you're in a bar. By like this other guy that we know. Do not bring up Chelsea or Drogba <laughs> within like five minutes. Do you know Drogba for the most goals yeah, in well, Don't leave with... a date an hour in to go watch Chelsea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking, idiot. Fucking hell. But I, I like this film because but it's the perfect time to watch the film because just between that. Do you know like that Peep Show episode where they're stuck inside and it, they call it the Never Zone? Yeah. Like they're like, we need to escape the never zone. And it's like, that is what Christmas and New Year is. I keep forgetting what day it is even. But it was the perfect film to watch because film where nothing really happens. Mm. But it's just a good film. <laughs> well, I liked it. It's a film that will get you nostalgic about your own school life and your own childhood. It's like just full of relatable moments. It's yeah, like yeah. you recognise the teachers, you recognise the idiot students, you recognise that schmarmy photographer student who you don't like and is a bit mm. of a dick and he's a bit of a smooth talker, but you know, no one really, none of the lads like him, but a few of them, he's got a few friends because he's quite confident and whatever. And you recognise like your idiot mate. So that one friend who leaves school early and starts earning a bit of money yeah, yeah. and you start thinking, oh, that's like, we should do that too because... He's got a hundred quid of spending money a, a week. But yeah. that seems like a fortune when you don't have a job at all and you're still in school. And all those little things, you know, the crooked teachers and just the lovable dopes. Like, like if you want to fall into... That was always my favourite group at school or category of guys where it was like... They weren't quite the coolest. They weren't dorks. But they were idiots, but they were lovable idiots. And like, That is what Gregory is. Like, yeah, he is yeah, just... Yeah, 100%. He's a brilliant dope. And... The girl he's got this obsession with, Dorothy. Don't like him like that. I actually didn't like Dorothy. Yeah, she is a bitch because later on we find out that she basically sets him up, don't she? Well, she sets him up in a nice way. but With loads of girls. No, so, well, we'll get to that in a second. But she sets him up in a nice way, but she just kind of got a bit of a too cool for school sort of thing. Hi, Dorothy, I got your message. Good. I just wanted to know what you're up to at lunchtime. Well, nothing that can't wait a million years. Will you help me out with some goal practice? Yeah, sure. I want to practice some shots at different angles. I'll bring my compass. <laughs> Good. Well, I'll see you at half twelve then. Fine. Good. See you. But, to yeah. be fair to her, like, she doesn't have to be interested in Gregory. Gregory's just decided he loves her. 
based on not even knowing her. He just fancies her. She's not interested. She kind of uses him a bit. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, plays him on a bit, you know, uses him for goal practice. That was out of order. But I also think the conspiring that goes on that builds up to the finale had already been in play at that point because you start to notice this character, Susan, who is friends with Dorothy. And, that you know, they're in the lab, in the science room one day in during science class and they're doing like a little experiment and Susan starts asking about Gregory and you can tell already oh she yeah. must fancy him it plants the first seeds of it and they go out and I like that shot where all the girls are looking over the playground of boys and they're having a moment where they're just saying like what are boys like I just don't understand boys look at them all and I just love it because it, it just you just see they're all like wrestling and falling over each other and and that is the difference where we'll never understand why women don't understand how funny that is and how much fun that is and will they'll never understand how they can think that's fun and poor gregory is literally the worst goalie i've ever seen yeah. in my life like like he's not even constant i don't dorothy just asked him because he's put in goal because he he's a shit striker and the paedophile PE teacher puts him there. Yeah. Like, We're not fucking fool you there. I think, do you think he just, because he doesn't have the heart to throw him out completely yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> So he's like, okay, I'll put him in goalie for a week. I'll put him as the goalie for a week and then after that we'll kick him yeah, out. Yeah, I think he generally does like Gregory. Because he hides from him at one point when yeah, he comes yeah. back in and I think it's when he's supposed to be telling him that he's off the team. But maybe, maybe Declan, he is a good goalie, but now that Dorothy has come along in the team he just doesn't concentrate on what's going on he's just looking at what Dorothy does the whole time so he's like oh I didn't even he was in it's in a match he's like oh I lost sight of the ball for one second actually a microsecond and it went in but he wasn't even concentrating because he was looking at Dorothy you know? I think it's a bit of that but a bit Both. he is just a fucking he is he's not an, he's an oaf He's not coordinated, is he? He's not no, like no, a, yeah. a natural athlete. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. a lanky streak of piss, like yeah. complete with a big barnet on top and just an absolute muppet. Oh. Took my off the ball for a split second. Two microseconds. We need more women in this team. More. What a prick. It's actually really sad because the, the goalie thing was bang out of order because... He's crapping goal. She's actually Dorothy's actually good at football, mm. by the way. She's just banging in shots left, right, and centre. She says to him like, "Oh, sorry, you missed lunch." He's like, "Don't care about lunch. Don't need lunch. <laughs> I'm 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 a maverick. I'm a psycho." Yeah. And then like he's just wasted his whole break on account of her to just get led on, which I found quite sad. It was in a but way. it depends how you take it. Like in the spirit of the film. <clears throat> it's not because she says to him at the end of it she basically leads him into asking her out yeah yeah or he finally gets the guts to ask her out and she says yes straight away very nonchalantly and he's kind of shocked they set a time and then she walks off and he kind of like follows her back into the room he's yeah. like just checking it actually yeah, yeah. is tonight and it actually is at he's this not, time he's yeah. not kind of shocked he's like are you joking yeah you can't believe <laughs> yeah. it yeah. It's, how good is the performance as well? Like yeah, Gregory yeah, yeah. is so he's just so believable as that dumbass. Like you you one hundred percent believe him and love him. So he, he checks with her and he's like, okay, and then he goes home and he borrows the f- nice jacket and he cleans the stain off or he hides it and then he shows up for the date. He's waiting there for ages and no one comes by and then eventually one of Dorothy's other friends shows up and just sort of says to him, oh, she's not showing up. He's got that, like, slight twinge in his face where you're trying to hide the fact that you're absolutely heartbroken and embarrassed. <laughs> and he's, just, he's just so nice about it. He's like, oh, well, thanks for telling me. I guess I'll just go home. And this, this bit really was great because the way they built in to just sum up Gregory, he goes to leave and he's like, he goes to the door, which is locked, and he's like, ah, oh, it's the other way. <laughs> Bless him. Like, he just can't do anything right. And she he? uh, she just doesn't let him leave. She's like, no, nah, you may as well walk me to get some chips. And he's like, oh, okay. And she basically talks him into, you're going to buy me chips. And he's like, mm. don't really want to, but okay. And then she just, she keeps like being like, nearly like like a drunken idiot. Like trying to just like point them in the, in the direction of the chip shop and saying, no, no, we're going this way. They're headed to the chip shop. And I love that. As, as they're on their way there. But they stop by a phone box and she sneaks in there and 
again, not explaining anything to him. She's just kind of like, she's just gesturing, like, hide by the window, hide, block the window up. So he stands there all confused still. And she gets changed into her, like, she puts a bit of lippy on and puts on some awful crop top yeah. and ready for a date. And he's at this point embarrassed because he's thinking, oh, I don't fancy you and I don't want to be on a date with you. And she's saying, no, no, I've got, an- you know, I'm not, this isn't for you. I've got another date tonight. And it turns out she does have another date. Because she kind of hands her off to another friend who's, yeah. who's chatting to him. And you can see he's really confused at this point. And the two mates who are always telling the facts and trying to talk to girls are seeing him with chatting up two girls on the one yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. So they're kind of like in awe, like, how's he doing this? But then she hands Gregory off to another girl, Susan. Who's nice. Who's nice, who's lovely. Yeah. And finally we realise this was their little plot to get him on a date with Susan because Susan actually does fancy him she's got a nice little beret on she's there you know she even fancies him and likes him when he's for some reason calling out like a cat into the night a few nights before when she's sitting in bed reading and she can just hear him like with his head out the window making dying cat noises all night And they end up having a date. And I love this date because it is such a true <laughs> nice date. Like it, like this, their date is the quintessential example of why you should never worry about what you're going to say on a date. Because it's not about what you're going to say. It's about just having the chemistry and, gum and the pitter patter back and forth. And they just talk absolute shite. They, at one point, they're just saying numbers to each other back and forth. Yeah. Or just saying nonsensical facts. And they love it because the chemistry's there and it doesn't really matter beyond that point. They're just enjoying each other. She's already made up her mind. She fancies them. Yeah. So it's all golden. And I just love the fact that he doesn't even really care or seem to r- remember or notice at this point that he's obviously been tricked the whole time. He's just like, oh, someone fancies me. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, yeah. Again, the more you describe Gregory's behaviour... It is just me. Like, I remember... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to say it, like, that cat noise thing. What? I didn't think you were going to say that. You not heard this story? No. Basically, obviously, I work in HR, so I've done oh, that HR okay, quality. Yeah. And all... And because a mixture between the pandemic, it was during a pandemic, so we had to do it on Zoom. <laughs> and, like, the most embarrassing thing ever, like, it, it was like, oh, everyone's like, lunch, like, see you in, like, blah, blah, blah five minutes or whatever or half an hour so i had thought i'd turn my camera off but i forgot i forgot to mute the oh. microphone and my cat was on my bed and i started like stroking it making it oh, obviously you know about the weird noises when i like squeeze no, I go, you gotta make some. and i just start going mm. <laughs> oh, that is so embarrassing. everyone can hear it and I've done it. How long a, were you going on for? I've done it for a good like minute. Oh my and god! And like, you were definitely talking to it in like a cute yeah, voice. And then stuff. like I checked my phone, and my mate from work, Matt, who was also in my cohort, was like, "Phil, mutual mic." <laughs> in big, Wait, just be in, glad you didn't start having a way. In of... big question marks, in big exclamation marks. And then I got back from lunch and was like, the teacher was quite a funny guy. Like, and there was a couple nice girls in this, like. And they were all like giggling, and I was like, I was like a like all sheepish, like looking around, like someone's gonna say something. And my tip, my tutor was like, "Well, we all want what Phil had for lunch <laughs> with all those noises." Oh and my. I was like, "Yeah, I, I am Gregory, for fuck's sake!" At least it wasn't work. Yeah, at least I weren't on camera as well because it would it would have been the back of my head just going. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, but going back to Gregory. So in the end, Gregory does kind of win oh know, he absolutely in a way, wins yeah. he completely wins he gets a girl that likes him and he gets... he has a nice little kiss by the doorstep I like yeah. that she walked him home as well yeah he goes back to his I think he's just kind of like a mate he is one of he's those guys. we all know a guy that kind of needs a woman to come along and just be like go that way stand over no do this no you're getting it wrong again do that <laughs> and he just yeah <laughs> <laughs> You need more than that. Yeah. He just needs that and it's good for him. It's not going to be like 
a nagging wife who's horrible to him. Like, they need that dynamic. It's going to suit them. They might not go out forever. They might get married and fucking stay together forever. But it's not the point. It's just we leave it there. Gregory goes off to bed. And he has that nice little chat with his little sister about it afterwards. And she asks, oh, is she going to be your girl? And he's like, you're my girl. And we learn Gregory's girl in the film is his sister. It's not even talking about his girlfriend or anything yeah. the whole time. But yeah, in the end, Gregory does win. And I and I hope that he continues that relationship. Yeah. After, we'll never know because there's not a Gregory's girl number There two. is. Oh. It's Gregory's girls. And it's when he's Ooh. 20 years later when he's got um, a daughter. He's married. Yeah. So, and which I've never seen as well. So I definitely All right, want to check we'll that out. Alright, we'll do it. We'll do it. Off you go, you small boys. 